Okay, Robin. Plank steak. Plank steak. Did you just video that? Hey, Tish. <clears throat> Cousin Tish in the house. There we go. Now it's loud up on there. Hey guys, Will Chase. Hi, Will. Hey, Will. Hey, Tish. The other cousin Tish. The other cousin. We got two cousin Tishes. All right, we're gonna, like normal. Give it a few minutes here, and uh, go grab yourself a glass of wine, cocktail, beer, and uh, hey, Tom, we're gonna get uh, rolling here in about one minute. We got a good one tonight. We have. Uh, Little outdoor Mexican this evening. Everything being done on the green egg. Hey, Angel. Hope you're doing good. All right. About 30 seconds and we're going. Oh, there's the other... Who's the other Tish? That's my other cousin Tish. Yeah, that's Catherine's cousin. I have one cousin Tish. Oh, there, I didn't see it. Tish Taylor, who lives in Hattiesburg. Two first cousins. All right, let's go. Let's go. All right, well, welcome to, uh, hey Tracy. Uh, and first things first, Tracy, I saw the email today. Uh, sent out to the company. I appreciate it very much. Thank you for all the support. That was very kind of you, and uh, it meant a lot, so thank you. All right, let's talk about what we got. We're going uh, Mexican night tonight. You can see what's in front of you. Um, we've got, we're doing flank steak fajitas. Uh, we're doing Mexican, grilled Mexican street corn. And we are going to make a homemade guacamole. Uh, I have two fantastic wines, one red, one white, uh, picked out by Lori at Cheers. Uh, I explained to her what we were cooking tonight. She picked both these out. The red is from Spain. The white is from the Loire Valley in France. Uh, they're going to be awesome. So let's get started. Um, like I said, we are doing flank steak. You can see it right here. Uh, flank steak. Thin, comes from the belly of the cow, all right? And it's a lean cut of meat, so you gotta be careful in the way you cook it. It's gotta be done mid-rare, medium at the most. And we'll also talk about, you can see this flank steak a little bit. It's got grain in it, the lines that you see. So when we go to cut it, we want to make sure we're cutting against the grain or it'll be really chewy. Now, I talk all the time about I'm an olive oil, kosher salt, black pepper guy. And this is probably one of the only dishes that I do where we get just a touch of a marinade. So we're going to take this flank steak. We're going to take our little freezer bag here. No order. All right. We're going to get that flank steak in there. All right, we're gonna take a little bit of fresh lime juice. Get that in. I brought my outdoor garbage can out tonight. One whole lime squeezed in there, okay? Next, oh, let me get it. We're gonna and, uh, get it going. We're gonna do a little bit of kosher salt over the left shoulder, as we talked about. 
And then we are going to do a little bit of crushed red pepper flakes. Okay? Now, what we want to do is take that, press some air out of it. Just give it a good, good shake. Now, typically, I would let this marinate for, I don't know, 45 minutes in the fridge uh, before we started cooking it, but we know we're kind of strapped on time. So we've got that done. We're gonna leave that right there. We're gonna get rid of our little tray. We've got our egg. Uh, she is up to about 600 degrees, so she is really cranking hot. Uh, no deflector plate tonight. Uh, we're not gonna be afraid of the flames. We're gonna be ready to cook, go to town. Um, while we're doing this, we're gonna go ahead and lay our trusty cast iron on the grill, get it nice and hot, because like I said, we're doing fajitas. We're doing fajitas, we gotta have some bell peppers and onions. So I have taken just a orange bell pepper, cut the sides off, cut it into some nice strips, red bell pepper, a little bit of white wine. All right, so those are ready to go. We're just gonna go a little olive oil, salt and pepper on those when our skillet gets hot and we'll be ready to roll. So, while this meat <laughs> is kind of marinating, we'll give it a minute or two. Uh, Tracy said the broadcast was interrupted. Is there anything else in the steak marinade besides the lime juice and red pepper? Yes, so we have olive oil, kosher salt, honey, lime juice, and crushed red pepper. All right, so our skillet is getting hot. All right, now we can't have fajitas, we can't have Mexican night without making some guacamole. Why well, buy your guacamole? You can make your own, all right? We got a simple recipe here. All right, so we have three avocados. Good to go, okay? We talked about this the other night. We're gonna run our knife down till we hit the seed. Roll it up our knife. Give it a twist, all right? Go like that. Seed comes right out. We get rid of this in the garbage can. All right, so we're gonna get all three of these done. All right, a little crack, a little twist. One more to go. Homemade guacamole. Get to our seed, roll it up our knife. Give it a little twist. Crack that seed, it comes right off. Now what we want to do is, we want to go ahead and like we did also the other night, take our little spoon, run it around the edge, and let's pop all of this avocado out. Um, these are actually really good shape here. Not too firm, um, these are good. So there's different ways to do this guacamole. Um, some people like their guacamole with the avocado diced. Some people, I, but I will say, I prefer it more as a dip, more as kind of creamy. And I'll show you what we're talking about. Um, so we're gonna get all these out. Last one. Really not a lot of waste there. You can see we're able to scoop really that whole uh, avocado out of there, not getting a lot of waste. All right, little wipe of the hands. Get that off there. Now, what we want to do is, we want to start mashing this avocado, okay? You can kind of see to my left, I'll see if I can move it like that a little bit. Um, we have our other ingredients. So, uh -huh. I don't want to add those just yet. I want to kind of get our avocados mashed up before we add everything else in. So we're just gonna take these, kind of mash them all up like you're doing some potatoes. Like I said, I don't like mine diced. I don't like big whole pieces. I like it more creamy like a dip. I love how um, it shows Grandan and Claw Claw in the house. All right, Grandan and Claw Claw. It's through my Facebook through page. Through your Facebook account. <laughs> Um, Julie Clement is here. Hey, Laura Julie. did some really cute avocado emojis I've oh. never seen before. 
And we've got Carter. Carter's here and he says he's making a lemon pie. Oh, Carter. While you're making uh, the tacos. Okay. Well, so. Carter, please send me a picture of that lemon pie because I would love to see it. All right. So that's all we've done. We've taken our avocados. We've mashed them up with the fork. Nothing fancy. All right. We got them a good consistency, what I like. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add in the rest of our ingredients. So we'll talk about those here. All right. Now, you can kind of see I combined a couple of ingredients together for the sake of less dishes that we all have to clean as a family when I'm done with this nightly project. So <laughs> I have some, a lot of times you see Roma tomatoes, little red tomatoes. I had orange, little snacking tomatoes. So that's what I used. Okay, I'm not worried about it. It's gonna add some good color. I also have two cloves of garlic that I've chopped up. Just combine this, so we're gonna add that in. Okay. Ray says, thank you for the videos. They're super useful. Oh, thank you so much. <clears throat> and Christy Walter says she's loving watching these. Hey Christy, thank you for hope doing you and John them. and the kids are doing good. Um, in this one, this one might be a little tough to see, but I did do half of a red onion diced. I have one jalapeno minced up. And then I have a little bit of cilantro. All of those ingredients, we're dumping them right in. All right, and one of the last thing we need is a little more fresh lime. Just squeeze it right over the top. This is what gives it that little bit of acid, a little bit of bite, good <laughs> flavor. Okay. And we got to add just a little pinch of kosher salt. Kosher salt. That is it, folks. That's all you need for guacamole. Uh, that took us three or four minutes. We're going to combine this, get it all mixed up. Cilantro, tomatoes, red onion, little lime juice. All right. And you have yourself a little great guacamole. All right? Perfect. That looks All good, right. Larkin. Good. So, let's get to our steak now. All right? Typically, like I said, we would let this marinate 35, 45 minutes in the fridge before we mess with it. But we know we got to get going. So, once again, we have a flank steak. We have olive oil, kosher salt, black pepper, lime juice, honey, and crushed red pepper. All right. Our egg is at around 600 degrees. No deflector plate, nice and hot. We're not gonna be afraid of the flame here. All right, we've got our cast iron in there getting super hot for our fajita vegetables. What we're gonna do, can't have fajitas without some good sauteed vegetables. All right. How many people will that piece feed, Larkin? Um, well, we have uh, how many in our house? Seven. Seven. It's going to feed our whole family. Um, that's going to be enough steak. So we just went straight down on the rack with that, okay? Uh, we've got our good crust. We want to get a crust on there. The honey that we added is going to provide some sugars. You'll see the dark color that it'll get. It'll be really intense, okay? So now we've got that going. Our cast iron's ready. Touch of olive oil. Let's take our vegetables. We've got our sliced red bell pepper, orange bell pepper, and onion. You can hear that, I hope. That's nice and hot. We're gonna let those start sauteing, give them a little seasoning. A little pinch. All right, we're gonna shut the lid, move on to our last ingredient, okay? Our corn. Everyone, uh, as of late, really talks about Mexican street corn. It's become a super, super popular thing. All right, so I'm gonna show you our version, or my version, of that Mexican street corn. So here's what we got. Remove this. Clark block. Talley says he drizzles a little honey on his guacamole. I've never Ooh, heard that, but it sounds really good. I've never good. heard that either. 
Good idea, Clark. And Clark, can't wait to see your photo for tonight. I'm expecting one, so uh, let's see one. All right, so what do we have? Mexican street corn. We have four sweet, sweet corns on the cob, okay? What I did was I have these little skewers. Uh, got them from Germantown Hardware. Uh, shout out to Germantown Hardware, great store. If you need anything, go support them. Uh, if you need anything for a green egg, go get it. So we've got four of those. All right, I've skewered those in there. Now, in my bowl, probably not the most appealing looking thing, but I have mayonnaise, Dukes, because we're in the South. It would be uh, a sacrilege to use any other mayonnaise uh, other than that. And I have a little bit of sour cream. I would say I probably have a half a cup or a cup of uh, mayonnaise to about a half a cup of sour cream. Now, the true recipe calls for crema. I don't know if you've ever, a lot of people have probably heard of that. Crema is a Mexican sour cream, all right? Uh, we couldn't get our hands on that today, so we, uh, we use regular sour cream, so we've got it. All right, we are going to add to that a little bit of smoked paprika, all right? Just a little shake. Give it a little color. We're gonna add a little bit of garlic powder. Who is? Miss Faye, hey, Turner, uh, Miss Faye, Turner just told me you were watching. Thanks for watching. All right, we are gonna add a little bit of garlic powder. Okay? All right, and my little thing on there is, uh, if you have not found and are not using Valentina hot sauce, get to the store and get it. It's the absolute best. Uh, they have this, they also have the extra hot, um, it's not too crazy, but I, I find this one has the best flavor. Get you a little Valentina. We're gonna put just a little bit of that in there. Morgan, is there anything you can substitute for the mayo? Not everybody is a fan of mayo. Uh, well, you can just do crema. You can just do the Mexican sour cream. That probably doesn't get any better for those people that are not wanting to do it. Um, but the traditional street corn is that. So we're gonna give just a little squeeze Terry, I'll tell you, I'm not a fan of mayo either, but I absolutely love this recipe. So we are putting our sauce together. It's going to go on our corn. So what we're about to do is we're going to take our corn. We're going to lay it on this grill. and We're going to get a little char on it. Okay. I didn't pre-boil it ahead of time. I didn't do anything. Uh, we want it to be nice and crispy. Once that's done, we're going to slather this sauce on there. We're going to put some... Uh, We've got to adapt a little bit, uh, and I'll explain that in just a minute. This dish has cheese on it, uh, cotija cheese, which is traditional Mexican cheese. We had a little issue with the lady at Kroger uh, that brought our groceries today. Uh, we did not get it, so but that's what cooking is all about. Sometimes you have to adapt, and we adapted, so we'll show you what we did. All right, let's check this. All right, our veggies are going great in our pan. Starting to get a little color. Oh yeah, those are looking awesome. And let's check our steak here. Look at that. Oh yum. There's our, are we showing up? Uh, yeah, just a little bit higher and you can get it real close to the camera. Oh. Perfect. There's our flank steak. Getting great color on it. Getting a great caramelization, good sugars. We're gonna throw that back on. All right, set. So, our veggies are fantastic right now. They've probably got about two minutes. Our steak's probably got two or three. We're gonna take our corn. Let's see. And we're gonna kind of lay these corn on there. Adam Feinberg says he went and bought a big green egg just like yours. There you go. He wants to know if we can get you to write a cookbook and he'll be your agent. Okay, sounds wonderful. I already wrote one a couple years ago. I can write another one though. Thank you. All right. All right, so our corn is on. All right, we want to get some color. We're going to put this away. We're going to shut the lid. And it's hopefully everybody's favorite moment. It's wine time, okay? Um, let's talk about these two wines. Terry said she'll buy the cookbook, and Crystal says she wants to come over. Okay. Who's, that's Crystal. That's oh, uh, Marco's mom. That's Marco's. Hey. So that's a huge compliment Absolutely. coming from her. I hope so. That's, <laughs> she could really judge me, you know? Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about our two wines. Like I said, once again, 
Um, I do go every day. I think about our menu, um, the food that we're serving. So I knew we were going to do a little Mexican style food. So I wanted to have a good wine to accompany that. Um, so I went up to Cheers here in Collierville and, uh, like I said, I, there's a lot of great liquor stores in Memphis, whether it's Buster's, whether it's Kirby. Um, I like Cheers because it's in my neighborhood. Um, if I was in East Memphis, I'd be, there's other ones that I would go to and support. They're all great, but uh, it's become my little neighborhood store because it's close. So um, first one we're gonna talk about, let's talk about the white. So the young lady today, Lori at Cheers, I was explaining what we did. Um, I was telling her that we were doing a little Mexican street corn and a little bit of homemade guac, and she recommended this. Obvious Wines number two, Bright and Crisp. All right, it is a Sauvignon Blanc from the Loire Valley in France, um, under $20. Uh, and the thing that I really liked about this when I brought it home was I saw their marketing. And a lot of times some of these labels are getting a little too crazy for me. Um, but this one was very simple. I like that it says hashtag light body, hashtag snob free, hashtag dry. And then on the back, Kat, tell me where that shows up the best. You pull it, push it up just a little bit closer and down. Down just a little bit. There you go. Okay. You can see it really breaks it down for you. Um, it talks about citrus. And these are on a four glass scale. Three out of four. Fruity, two out of four. Dry, three out of four. Good body, good floral, good alcohol. Shows you exactly where it's from. Simple. Um, I took a sip of it. It is fantastic. I think we'll enjoy it. All right. Now, our next one. We're doing the flank steak. So we've got a lot of smoky flavor, a lot of spice with the crushed red pepper. Uh, Lori picked out this wine, Las Rocas. It is a Grenache. It is from Spain. Um, she said it will be fantastic with the steak. Um, it is, which way? This way towards me. That way? And down. And down. Notes of cherry, blackberry, and subtle oak. Um, so we're really matching our food and wine up tonight. Uh, we're doing a little Mexican food and we're drinking a wine from Spain. So that's the things that I'm talking about. Don't be afraid to get out, talk to your liquor store people, tell them what you're cooking, let them pick something out, have fun. Don't just every day grab your same thing. Experiment a little bit, have some fun. All right, so there's our two wines. Do we get to taste test? Yes, it? I'm sorry, I should have. You want red or white? I'll try the white tonight. Executive producer always gets the uh, taste. So we're going white. We're going the Obvious Wines number two, Lore Valley Sauvignon Blanc. There we go. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, I'm gonna pulling our old trusty tray up here, which I think y'all have grown to know with me. That means we're gonna let something rest. Oh, I can see our corn, it's looking good. I'm gonna give that, yep. Oh yeah, that is delicious. Isn't it good? Oh yeah. All right, so let's check our corn out. Look at that, folks. Side one, that's what we want. All right, this isn't burnt. This is caramelized, cooked. You want that color. So we're gonna flip these up. Oop, our little stick broke, that's all right. We're gonna flip them over on the other side. All right, we're gonna give our steak another minute here, all right. And then we're about to pull uh, pull this off. Now, the flank steak, as you can see, it is thin to thick. So look, you're not gonna be able to nail a mid-rare temp from one end all the way to the next. It's not gonna happen. It's okay, all right? Uh, what I try to do is probably try and keep this as medium as possible, and if this is a little bit rare, doesn't bother me. The adults gotta eat too, and I don't mind it that way. So give me about one minute and we are gonna pull this steak off. We're gonna dress this corn and show you how we had to adapt and uh, we'll be finished. So good time for questions. Terry, first Terry likes her chemistry. She likes the executive producer yeah. uh, chef action. Uh, it's, um, Kat does a great job helping me. Mary Lee can smell it all the way from Branson, Missouri. Mm. So we've got Branson, Missouri got Branson, watching Missouri. tonight. And then Crystal Cervantes says, that is, it was just right. You did it perfectly. On the corn? Uh-huh. Okay, good. Good. Yep. So, um, there we Once go. Once again, uh, you know I'm a big fan. I always, I love my mineral water. Big fan of the Topo Chico. So, uh, we always have a little bottle. It's great to have a sip of. So, we've got that tonight. 
All right, all right, let's, uh, let's pull this steak off. I'm gonna take a risk here. A risk? Well, I think we might be a little rare to mid-rare, but that's okay. Look at that color. Oh, it looks great. All right, great color. The smell, you can hey, smell that honey. You can smell everything. <laughs> all right. Once again, our vegetables. My towel's gotten a little wet. Don't ever grab a hot skillet with a damp towel because it will, <laughs> that heat will burn through in a millisecond and you will be in trouble. Okay. There's our vegetables. Oh, we got some good questions. All right. If it's time for questions. Sure. Ann says, define the myth, Larkin, that flank steak is a tough meat. It, well, flank steak can be a tough meat. And that's what we talked about. If it is overcooked, you cannot cook it medium, midwell, or well done. You also cannot cut it with the grain. So you can see it probably a little better here. Can you tell those grains, Kat? Yep. So you can yeah. see the grains, the line of the meat running up and down. If we were to cut this steak tonight and cut it this way, it would be super chewy. We want to cut it, our non-rookie cut, on an angle against the grain. And you have to cut it thin. If you cut this steak thick, it's going to be chewy. It's going to be tough. Yep. All right, so. How about the avocados? How do you tell if they're ripe or not? A feel. That's it. That's all I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I want it to be firm, but give just a little bit. Uh, that's how I do it. Yes, Terry, you can use a flat iron steak, but when I get sent to the grocery store and I get the flat iron over the flank, I, uh, Larkin tends to um, be a little disappointed. He prefer yeah. the flank. I prefer the flank or skirt. Flat iron is a little bit thicker. I think it's chewier than the flank or the skirt. So, all right, we've pulled our corn off. We've got good little color on it. We're gonna take our mixture of sour cream, mayonnaise, uh, lime juice, garlic powder, paprika, and a little bit of Valentina. All right, we're gonna brush this on here. We're gonna cut them up. All the kids are wondering, do I get one of those? We're gonna cut them. All right, so we've got our trusty little tool. We're gonna give this a wipe. All right, you don't have to go super heavy, but you want there to be plenty on there. Cover it up. Okay. We are good to go there. That does look good. Now, here is where we had to adapt. As I said, cotija cheese, which is a crumbly Mexican cheese, is typically what you would use for this. A good substitute is feta, all right? It's very close. We couldn't get either of those. So we're going back to Mr. Old Trusty Parmesan. The Parmesan's great. It's got a little tart to it, all right? And it'll melt well. This corn's hot, so we're gonna make it snow. Over Making this. It snow. Over that. That's looking awesome. All right. We're going to sprinkle a little fresh lime juice. Is you call that sprinkle when you. I, I shouldn't. Squeeze. Okay. Sorry. Just making sure. Yeah. You corrected me. I, I was, that was deserving. All right. So we're going to take these, lay them in our pan. All right. And we are good to go. Last thing, we've let our steak rest. Typically, we would have let it rest about 15 minutes. Y'all don't want to wait around for that. Neither do I. All right, so we're pulling that off. All right, let's see. I'm going to move this out of the way. All right, here's the moment of truth. Okay, now let me show you what I like to do. This is a wide piece of meat. I don't want to cut a strip that long. So what I always do is I turn it and I go with the grain down the middle. Okay? And let me show you what we got and then I'll explain what I do. So we have gone from rare, mid-rare, all the way down, up, down. Pull it up to the camera a little bit closer and then down. There you go. There you go. This is what's gonna happen. Rare, mid-rare, gets thinner. That's okay, you can't do anything about it. I'm very pleased with that. So we went with the grain down, but now we're gonna turn it sideways, okay? And the good thing about that is you can kind of do them one at a time. Get her a good angle, cut it nice and thin. Super hot. You can see how many slices we're getting here. 
Yes, Terry, the table did come with the green egg. And everybody's asking yeah. um, about recipes. Yeah, so I gotta do that. We have, we, I know it's some of y'all don't get to start right at six o'clock. Larkin can, Oop, oh, we man, lost down. man down. Um, man down, five Larkin seconds. Larkin always. Um, Turn or lead it. God, now I already lost my train of thought. You're talking about recipes. Um, so we've had several people ask. I know all, a lot of us can't get started right at six o'clock, so you're tuning in. He'll post it to his page. He'll, I'll post the entire video to my. And I really try page. to go over the ingredients. Yeah, and so, um, but we'll we'll make a, a, a more of a detailed list in the future and kind of get you the recipes for all of these. So. All right, so we're plating up. We got our old trusty platter. All right, taking a little effort on there. Making it look nice. You worked hard on it. Make it look nice. Great color. Caramelized. You know? Really perfect. Okay? I'll lay my towel out there. All right, we're going to put our guacamole. Boom. Right Ooh. in the middle. We're going to take our street corn. See if I can get that turned. We're gonna lay that Mexican street corn out. And last but not least, look at that, great color on our vegetables. All right, good color, good char on there. Cast iron, it's got a lot of flavor. We're gonna lay those right over the top. Oh, yummy. We got um, also a people asking about the pans and your knife. Yeah. Um, the table does. The table came with the green eggs. Yeah. That was a gift from his mom and dad this Christmas. Um, but the knives that we use Wistolf. are. What was it again? I'm sorry. Wistolf. Wistolf. But I, I, if I could say something on that, you don't have to. I've had these knives for a long time. Um, you do not have to go out and buy a two hundred dollar chef knife. Find a nice knife that fits in your hand, that's comfortable, and keep it sharp. That's the most important thing, okay? Just keep it sharp and do that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so that's it, guys. We've, we've got a wonderful Mexican dinner. I do have some flour tortillas inside. We're going to pop those in the oven. We're going to warm them up just a little bit. Let the kids lay it in there. Put a little salsa on it and, uh, and have a good Mexican dinner. And uh, we've enjoyed it. So there we go. Oh, we got it moved. All right, thanks again. Uh, great day today. We actually had a good amount of calls today. If you need any, you know, meat sauce, marinara, Alfredo, things like that, um, I've got it. So uh, I'll be back again tomorrow. Appreciate y'all watching. Cook yourself. Cook at home. Enjoy your family. Enjoy yourself. And cheers. Cheers. Thanks.